Because his love is not like anybody's you've ever known. His mercy endures forever. But the day of his wrath and his coming, where he's going to judge all that is sinful, all that Satan has done, and all those who love a lie, all those who are living in darkness. Listen, the Bible says that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. He's light. In him is no darkness at all. And he's going to judge all of us. All of us. And that's why it says every knee will bow and every tongue is going to confess Jesus is Lord. And it ain't going to be no casual, well, okay, I guess. It's going to be with everything in their fiber. And so what God is doing now is giving us time to get it together before he pour out his wrath. Romans chapter 1 and verse 8 says, for the wrath of God, here's how, why God's going to pour out his wrath. He said, it's revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Now, don't get this twisted. As much as he loves you and I, he's going to pour out his wrath against all ungodliness. Now, the devil don't want you to hear this. See, because this is not how you get people, the devil say, to come back to the house of God. But God would want you to hear this because it's in the Bible. Amen. For the wrath of God is real from heaven. It's revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Now, what your job and my job is, is to figure out what in my life is ungodly. It's simple. I don't have to judge you. You don't have to judge me. But all we have to do is, it, 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 that's why it's so hard for me to read the book and for you to read the book. Because there's a devil say that if you read that book, the Bible says this, it's a mirror. And it's going to show you, okay, that page you good. Oh, Steve, there's some ungodliness there. Because you, you are doing or not doing that, that's ungodly. And so here's how it works. God is either saying, repent now, change now, or if you keep that up or don't do that, you're in trouble with me. Because I love you. Remember the word. I'm correcting you now. And because you love me, like with the car, as soon as I point that out to you, hey, son, you, t you, you, you wrecked the car, you love me, you're going to fix that right away. You don't love me, you're going to turn the page and say, get out of my face, old dude. I do what I want when I want. Then, I love you too, I'm going to be patient. But when you get in trouble, you're going to need me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what will happen is, your faith ain't going to work like it would. You're going, daddy... They got me locked up. Yeah. Then you're going to worry if I'm going to come get you out of trouble. Because trouble is going to come to you. See? So, what he wants us to know is that an unrighteousness. So, you don't have to worry about all them people as hypocrites. Because everybody you know got some ungodliness in them and some unrighteousness in them. So it's no sense in me pointing at you, no sense you pointing at me, no sense in going to church. Don't fall for that. All them people at church is hypocrites because all the people in the club are too. All the people at the picnic are too. All the people at the party are too. Everybody got some ungodliness and unrighteousness in them. And so you just got to make sure you handling the ungodliness and the unrighteousness in you. Because everywhere you go, I ain't going to play the dozen with you. But if you go, ain't of them got it in them too. And the message is, flee the wrath to come. Everybody. Because God is, the Bible says this, brothers and sisters, no respect of persons. So if it makes you feel good that there are going to be some preachers, feel good about it. But there are going to be some people like you too. Yeah. So the preacher could be laughing, be some people like you. Yeah. We all have sinned. Yeah. And we all are waiting on the Lord to return. Yeah. Are you with me? Come on. Yeah. 
I'm going to finish up here. Now, here's the question that's being asked. You know, I did a little survey, and a lot of people are asking. They say, if, 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 uh, if the wrath of God is true, if that's true, more Christian churches don't preach on hell anymore. You know, I went to church for a year to a church, and they don't preach on hell anymore. Then uh, I would, I'd be concerned. Somebody didn't say hell, or somebody didn't say there's a reason. You know the reason why we should talk about hell? Because you need to know there's a consequence. Listen, if you, you went to work and your boss didn't say, now, I'm going to fire y'all if y'all don't come to work sometime. You both be there 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock become 8.05. 8.05 become 9.05. Sometimes he got to let you know now y'all supposed to be here at 8, 8 o'clock. Your working hours is from 8 to 5 now. What are you trying to tell you? If you ain't here at 8 to 5, you keep that up. You're going to get fired. Now, I don't care where you work. Sometimes they're going to you, let you know. Now, all right, now, y'all clock in when you go to lunch. Clock out when you go to lunch. What they're trying to tell you, you keep clocking out, don't go to lunch. We don't know where you're at. We're going to write you up. Three write-ups, you might be terminated. They're trying to tell you, you keep doing that, you're going to hell. Some kind of way, they're letting you know. You miss these meetings. We got mandatory meetings. You need to be here. You ain't here. We're going to ask you why. You keep on missing them, we're going to ask, okay, you're going to be terminated. You're going to hell. And so people are comfortable with going to church and never hearing about hell. That ought to let you know right there something wrong with that picture. I ain't say every Sunday you go, you ought to hear about who wants to work for a boss every time you go in there. Y'all going to be fired, <laughs> you know. No. But do a majority of Christians believe you go to hell if you die? A non-believer? No. People believe today that you, everybody going to heaven, non-believers. Folk be flipping the bird to God, and they going to heaven. Something wrong with that. Amen. Given their belief in hell, why don't Christians speak about it incessantly? How can you believe that all of our houses right now as we sit here is on fire, and, 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 and the usher know it, and, and she going to just sit here? Oh, I know it. Everyone, they, 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 just, they just called me and said, every one of y'all's houses is burning right now, and I'm going to sit here. I ain't going to say nothing. First question you'll ask, who knew? And when you heard I knew, every one of you going to be mad at me. And when I say my bad, you ain't going to receive it. <laughs> Do Christians worry the non-believer friends could burn? In hell? No. That ought to concern you. Look around the room. Please, I'm, help me here. Do you know it's possible there's people in this room that are going to burn in hell? I don't know who. But it's possible there's people in this room, we're watching in this room, that are going to decide that they're going to do it their way and going to burn in hell. And most of us don't have a concept of what God's wrath is, but it's coming. The Bible says, he that believeth on the Son have everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abided on him. Now, let me tell you, here, here's how it go, believers. Listen to me now. Listen to me. Don't check out now. If you have not received Christ as your Savior, the wrath of God is on you now. Somebody say, well, no, it's going to come. No, it's on you now. In other words, it's just like you done done something and your brother or sister say, uh, mama and them got a switch and they're going to whoop you. You might as well pull your pants down because you, you whooped. Yeah. That whooping coming. You can already feel the sting. <laughs> if you don't have Christ in your life, the wrath of God abides on you now. The reason you flee and you come to God is to get out from under the wrath. That's why we get, say, and the devil will let you go to the house and, and, and enjoy the club atmosphere for all your life like the baby. And you never flee from the wrath. Date all the pretty girls. 
all the guys. But let me ask you a question. Are you fleeing the wrath? And if you are, how are you doing it? Because if you're not building an altar, being honest on that altar about your own wretched, wretchedness, ungodliness, unrighteousness, then you're not fleeing. And here's what most people say. I go to church. So? You should. But maybe you're only going to hear the, the star and the Supremes. But are you free? Because if you still got unrighteousness and ungodliness in you, you're not fleeing. You're just going and playing the game that the devil will let you do. Because the God that answers by fire, let him be God. You should be building an altar. And that's on you. Are you listening? Now get this. The children of wrath, and you have been quickened. When you become a Christian, you have been quickened, meaning he make you alive because you were dead in trespasses and sin. What happens is you start to feel bad about your sin. You start to say, I can't keep doing that. I won't keep doing that. You have to change friends sometimes. It won't happen overnight, but you, you will. I would be lying to you. Anybody that tells you you can keep your same friends uh, is lying to you. I, I can't tell you just break up with that friend and break up with that friend. But I will tell you, you can't come to Christ and keep the same friends that cause you to do habits that cause you to trespass and sin. Yeah, yeah. That would make me a deceiver. So anybody can tell you, well, we all love each other. You can't judge anybody. I didn't tell you to judge anybody. I simply told you the truth of the word is that if you have an issue in your life with drinking Drano, why would you, if you're trying to get off of Drano, go out and gather friends that drink Drano? Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. That's what becoming a Christian is. I'm trying to help somebody get from first base, which you've been in for 20 years. I go to church. I go to church. Well, since COVID, you ain't been to church. You walked according to the prince of the power of the air. You know who that is? That's Satan. Stay with me here. Don't go to sleep. The prince of the power of the air. Satan is the prince and power of the air. God is in heaven. Satan is up under him. And then we're in the third the, the, the third, uh, in, in the first heaven or the heaven down here. Somebody said, this is heaven. Well, not like you think it is. Satan is down here. Look at it. Look at the word here. Come on. This is when the enemy is going to try to really get you because I'm about done here. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Are you an obedient child before God or disobedient? I ain't serving this with no sugar. Are you obedient or disobedient? I mean, you can answer that. And you know what? Somebody say you can't live the safe Christian life. That's a lie. Let's all live the safe Christian life for the next 30 seconds. Come on. Okay, good. We've done it. Now let's live another 30 seconds. Okay, good. Let's live a minute. We're going to read our Bibles. We ain't going to cuss. We ain't going to drink. We ain't going to have sex with people that we ain't married to. We ain't going to watch no porn. We ain't going to tell no lies. And if we're struggling in that area, we're going to go to the, and Lord help me because I'm struggling in that area. I'm your son. I know you don't like that. Amen. Amen. And then we're going to start all over. Okay, for 30 seconds, I'm not going to watch no porn. For 30 more seconds, I'm not going to smoke no weed. I feel like I love weed and I've got to have it, but you know what? Hey, I'm not going to, everybody's smoking weed around me, but you know what? I'm not going to smoke it. You know why? Because it's, I'm going to another God. Yeah. 
It's simple. I'm not going to murder anybody. I'm not going to lust. I don't care who wants to sleep with me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to entertain it. I'm not going to do it. See, I'm going to be obedient. And you know why I'm going to do it? Because now that I'm a Christian, this is what we Christians have going for us. I got a power in me and now I can say no. If you can't say no, you're not saved. Because the reason, what happens in salvation, he gives us the power of the Holy Ghost. And where I couldn't say no, I can say no. Now, if you can't say no, you the, you the flavor of the month. Everybody that want, to, want you to be their lollipop, you their lollipop, you ain't saved. Amen. You tell me, I go to church and I do this, year, you ain't saved, baby. You don't like my speech, it's true. Because he gives you power. You can't help the thought that come to you, but you can say, I ain't going to do it. Because it's like a dog chasing a car. If you caught it, what you going to do with it? You can't take it home. One or two nights with it, you don't want to deal with it no more. You need to start being honest. If you slept with it, you get tired of it texting you. <laughs> Am I being <laughs> like a fly? Why? What? 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 Tired of it. You know, he was the greatest sick I ever had. Okay, okay already. So what? <laughs> you know, oh no, I ain't got no money. I know, no, I ain't getting no, I'm not gonna pay no rent. No. You know what I mean? I mean you gotta think about it. like a dog catching chasing a car. Okay, if I caught it, what I'm gonna do with it? What it gonna bring with me? How many kids it got? What kind of baggage it got? What stupidity does it have with it? What ignorance does it have with it? Showing up on my door, you know what I mean? Bringing mess with it. <laughs> we had a conversation. Look, it's right there. Come on, among whom we had our conversation time past in their lust and in our flesh. That's the Bible. I know the game. I know two winks and what they're going to do. I know two drinks and what they're going to do. <laughs> I know the game. No, here, here, put my number in your phone. Know what's going to do. Know all that stupid game. That's a child game. That's what I did when I was in high school. Here, put your, put your number in my phone. Call me, but don't call me this time because my wife, but my girl called me. You know, put a, put a, put a, let me change the name. Your name is Betsy. Put my name in there, Robert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your husband don't catch you. Your boyfriend. You know the game. Give me your number. No, give me your number. You know the stupid game, but you're going to play the stupid game with your old self, too. <laughs> Ain't just these young kids playing. It's these old fools playing this stupid game. Your mama playing it. Your grandma trying to get some, a hookup. The old self. Hey, grandma, sit your butt at home. Go read your Bible. Close to heaven. You all be reading the Bible. You out there. Where grandma? She out there shaking her behind. Y'all be at home reading the Bible. You know I'm telling the truth. Oh, self, nearly 60 plus years old. You still out there. Go home, grandma. Get out the streets. Grandpa, this old self. Can't barely walk out there trying to lay it down. Go home. Ooh, put a chain on him and get his, drag his butt home. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. You know I'm telling the truth. That's cause the spirit, the spirit of that devil got these old folks. They ought to be at home saying, Lord, I'm hot, but like Red Fox, I'm coming, Elizabeth Sue. They ought, to, they ought to be doing that. They butt out in the street. Ought to be that repenting for all the stuff I've done. I'm sorry because I know I'll be coming soon out in the street because it's a spirit. It's so powerful. Don't look at me like I'm a fool. Be coming home in a minute. Out there trying to get their last groove on. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
a devil playing real. <laughs> the Bible says, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind, whereby the nature, the children of wrath, even others. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and righteousness of men. Now get this. And let me tell you why. How the wrath of God can be presently seen. Quickly. Verse 24 of Romans. The Bible says, here's how it can be seen. Therefore God gave them over. Here's how it's seen. God gives you over. To your desire. See, we've been waiting on the hammer to fall. Bam! Like killing a bug. Bam! Oh, he's seen the wrath. No, the wrath is when somebody head to the kitchen to get the raid. In other words, you know, that, that, that mouse or that rat or that bug, it's on. In other words, that fly, you know, you get that dish rag. How many good with that dish rag? <laughs> or that baseball cap. I'm good with the baseball cap. But the wrath is on. Here, look, look. It says, therefore God gave them over the sinful desires of their heart to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies. So here's how he reveals wrath. Come on. I got about three, four scriptures. I'm out of here. But here's how and why we come to help you with your altar. Because when God sees that you want his wrath, he simply does this. He says, I'll tell you what. I've been bringing the truth to you, trying to get it to you. But since you don't want it, I'm going to give you over to your sinful desire. See, 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 I told you, because he loves you, he chastens you. Put your hand out, darling. Put your hand out. Put it, put it out. Stop. That's chastisement with his word. But you know where you're in trouble? When you no longer get chastised. When you buck wild. That's what most people are doing now. They sitting back. I don't have to go to church. I don't have to do this. Cool. It ain't about love because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he loved us when we weren't righteous. But let me tell you when you know you're in trouble, when he don't chastise you no more. I could tell when I was in trouble, when I done something wrong and Levi Conley knew I done it wrong and he just kept walking. That's when it was danger. <laughs> he knew I'd done it wrong. Did you, did you break that window, Steve? Yes, sir. <laughs> I wanted to scream, whoop me now, please. <laughs> Day two. <laughs> you know when you're in trouble? When he don't correct you. When you don't feel no guilt. Come on, let's finish. You know why? He done gave you over. Come on, listen to me. It says it right there. God gave them over to sinful desires. If you are enjoying your sinful desire, God is giving you over to his wrath. See, it's like the first time you've done something, you did all you could to hide it. Oh, come on. It ain't been that long since you was innocent. You done something. You remember first time you done something, you were hiding all the evidence. You ain't want nobody to know nothing. But now you just bold about it. Remember the first time you smoked a cigarette? Man, you hid them under the bed, under the floorboard, <laughs> under the house. You know what I'm saying? Now you just leave them on the path because it ain't no big deal. It's like God gives you over to your sinful desire. So he's saying, since you don't want me, I'm going to let you enjoy. You liking that? Go for it. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm fattening you up for the kill. And so now you're all down in South Beach, Florida. We catch you on the news. Is that? That my son, down my daughter down there in cellophane, down there dancing. Like, <laughs> look, 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 look. We laughing, but it's true. He said, verse 26, 
Because God gave them over to shameful lust, even their women exchanged natural sexual relationships. Now, I'm not talking about the stuff they do it. See, I'm not, I'm not going there. We could go there. But God gives you up to it. You're doing something wrong. Now you don't feel bad about it anymore. You start justifying it. Are you listening? You married, committing adultery. What happens is, first time you do it, you, you do it because you're mad at your spouse. You ain't getting what you want out of them. Then after a while, you're just doing it. You got your other man, woman on the arm. You're just, you just strutting. I bring that up because that's how it goes. After a while, you saying, I don't care if they know or not. And we all know that's bad, don't we? But that's how you do God in whatever your sin is. Because see, if somebody did that to their spouse, y'all would say, now that's some scandalous stuff. That's a skank right there. But that's how we do God. Now we don't care. We're like, yeah, I do it. But you love me. That's why you died. Since your son, I'm going to do this. And God be like, I'm setting you up for wrath. I'm not setting you up, but you're being set up for wrath now. So I'm giving you over to your shameful love. In other words, it's just like somebody say, I'm through with you. And see, as long as you got somebody praying for you, and most of us abuse the people that we call weak that pray for us. Maybe a wife, a husband, maybe mama, 